Here we have another example, but with a wrinkle to this example uh, of how to come up with the amount of the product when you're given a certain amount of reactant. But in this case, we have a limit. We don't know which is the limiting reactant here though. We have iron added to sulfur with some heat, turns into sulf uh, iron sulfide. But we're given 12.22 grams of iron and 9.86 grams of sulfide and we're asked how much, uh, how much mass of iron sulfide is formed through this reaction. But we don't know what's the limiting reactant here. Is it iron or is it sulfur? Knowing that iron has a mass of 55.85 grams per mole and sulfur has a mass of 32.7 grams per mole, we should find out how many moles of each of the reactant we got. And then whichever there is more of, that will be the non-limiting uh, reactant and whatever there is less of, that will be the one that's driving the limit on the reaction. Especially since we can see here that this equation is balanced. For every one mole of iron plus every one mole of sulfur, we get one mole of sul uh, iron sulfide. All right, so number of moles of iron. Number of moles of iron is equal to, so we take the mass of iron, so 12.22 grams of iron, times the ratio of moles of iron to molar mass, which is grams of iron per mole. Okay, so one mole of iron has a mass of 55.85 grams, so we divide this by this, we get the number of moles of iron in the sample as the reactant. So we have 12.22 divided by 55.85, and we get uh, 0 0.2188 moles. That's how many moles of iron we started with. So if we have more moles of sulfur, then iron will be the limiting agent. If we have less moles of sulfur, then sulfur will be the limiting agent here. All right, so number of moles of sulfur is equal to the mass of sulfur we started with, which is 9.86 grams of sulfur, and multiply times one mole of sulfur divided by the number of grams per mole, 32.07 grams of sulfur. So this is the ratio of moles to the number of grams of sulfur. So we take 9.86 and divided by 32.07 and we get 0 0.3075 moles. So there's less iron than there is sulfur, so iron becomes the limiting reagent here, or the limiting reacting. So this here is the limiting factor in our reaction. Okay, so now that we have the number of moles of iron, we need to convert that to the number of moles of the and product, which is iron sulfide. Now, of course, there's a one-to-one -one relationship for every one mole of iron. There's one mole of, or, of iron sulfide. So if there's this many moles of iron, there will be this many moles of iron sulfide. So the number of moles of iron sulfide is equal to the same number, or 0 0.2188 moles. So that was pretty straightforward. We don't have to multiply it times any ratio. Now the last step is to see how many grams of iron sulfide that is. So the number of grams of iron sulfide is equal to the number of moles, which is 0 0.2188 moles of iron sulfide. And we multiply times the ratio of grams of iron sulfide divided by moles of iron sulfide. Sulfide. So one mole of iron sulfide is how many grams? Well, then we have to add these two together. When we add these two together, we get 55.85. Oop, let's try it again, 55.85, and add that to 32.07, and we'll get 87.92. So 87.92 grams per mole for iron sulfide, which goes in here, 87.92 grams per mole. So we multiply that times 0.2188, and we have a total of 19.24 grams of iron sulfide as a final product from this reaction, given that we were given 12.22 grams of iron and 9.86 grams of sulfur. So again, iron was the limiting factor, 
Sulfur was not. So based upon this, we figured out how many moles of iron we have, which is the same number of moles of iron sulfide, which then convert the grams of iron sulfide with this ratio of the number of grams of sulfide per mole of iron sulfide. And there we have 19.24 grams of the final product. And that's how you do that.